So the first thing is, in your book, what I'd like you to draw is kind of, rather than I've done a measurement of every single, well not every single, but all of these many angles, if you want you can actually draw a nice kind of small set of axes here, and you can draw just the actual tops if you connected all of the dots. I'm not going to do it on this because there are a few things I want to point out on this first. But essentially what you're getting is this kind of, well, you know how this is the sine graph that we've got here, right? That shape is called the sinusoidal wave. It's a really important shape. Anything in nature that works in a kind of uh, rhythmic cycle, like for example, tides as they go up and down, does this look anything like a wave, right, that comes from that? Um, a radio signal, you know, electromagnetic radiation, right? It's just this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down um, of energy coming across that we can measure on the electromagnetic spectrum. Does the same thing. The sun as it goes up and down and up and down. If you took a picture of where the sun was at, say, for example, 11 o'clock every day at the same point, same time, um, because of you know winter hours and all that kind of thing, right? Uh, and summer and it changing, the m position of the sun. Well, it's not going to go down here exactly. Um, the position of the sun is going to follow this same kind of pattern because it is a rhythmic cycle. Literally every single rhythmic cycle in nature uh, follows this same kind of pattern. Now, um, a few things to observe. Firstly. When you have a look at these angles, hopefully you have at the very least marked in 90, 180 and 270 degrees, as well as pi on 2, pi and 3 pi on 2 radians. Um, where have we ended? Where is the final spot? Over here. It's 360 degrees, which is also, Zach has used red, that's 2 pi radians, isn't it? 2 pi. Now what you should have noticed for both your sine graph and your cosine graph is you have come back around, literally, to where you started. Did you notice that? Um, on the sine graph you started measuring, how tall is that spot there? It's zero. It's zero. That's how high you go. And when you end, you're back to where you started. Same thing with cosine. Your first measurement for cosine, like how far across did I have to go? You went all the way up. By the way, what is this vertical scale? What's the top distance there? One. It's one because this is the unit circle, that's the furthest you can get. And all the way down the bottom here, because the lowest that it gets is negative one, right? Very good. Now what I'd like you to do, if you haven't already marked in one and negative one, do so. Also I'd like you to look for where half and negative a half are. Half and negative a half. So for example, I can say with certainty that that'll be a half. And negative a half is a bit harder to see, but I'm going to put it about there. Now, um, you know, half of you have the sine graph and half of you have the cosine graph. If you have the cosine graph, I want you to have a look at this one for a second. Do you notice how quickly the sine graph climbs up to a half? How quickly it happens? I wonder if you worked out how I eyeballed that so fast. It's not that I measured up to the one. Sine of a particular angle, it's an exact value. Sine of a particular angle gives you a half. What angle is it? <coughs> sine of... Think, think, think. <laughs> Have a look, it's on there, right? Sine of 10, 20, 30. it's 30. Sine 30 degrees or sine of pi on 6. That's equal to a half, right? Now, something I want to point out to you is, and again, this is why I want to draw extra stuff. If I go all the way across here, you can see 30 degrees or pi on 6 radians is not the only time you get sine of that equals a half. You've got all over here at 150 degrees, or what's that in radians? 150 degrees. Think, think, think. Can we convert it? 150 degrees is five of these, right? So it should be five pi on six. So there's five pi on six right there. So if I say that's, yeah, if that's 30 degrees, right? 30 to 150 is five times bigger. So pi on six to five pi on six, five times bigger, right? <laughs> Now, you'll also notice, right, um, the sine graph is positive up here. Of course it is, because on the unit circle you're measuring up, 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 all the way from 0 to 180, right? And that's why on the quadrants diagram, right, see that? A and S. Sine is positive up here. Down here you've got T and C. Sine is negative down here because you're below. The sine is the measurement of how up and down you are on the unit circle, okay? You'll also notice um, we've got some interesting points here at pi on 2 radians. Uh, looks like up here. And also 3 pi on 2 radians. 
even though we haven't got to there as a topic, we have a name for this kind of point here where it sort of stops for a second after going up and then it comes back down. We call these, we actually had two names for these. One is a stationary point. Like the graph stops going up for a minute. It just stops. That's what stationary means. Or it stops going down because it can't go any further. It can't go any lower on the unit circle. But then as well, you notice it changes direction. Does anyone remember what that's called? It changes direction. It, um, it turns around. So we also can call this a turning point. Okay. Now have a look at this smooth curvature. I've tried my very best to do it on here. Okay, like so. Now it looks so superficially like a parabola. It looks superficially like a parabola if you have a look at this part here. Okay, but it's really important for you to understand this is not a parabola. The sine and the cosine graphs, the trigonometric functions, yeah, they go up and down, down and up, but they are actually very, very different shapes. Okay. All right, can we switch over? Whose cosine did, oh, did we pick? We've already got one. So I use. Okay, let's. It doesn't have its on it. That's okay. That's fine. All right. Oh, I'm the other way around. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Sorry, it's because I've moved the uh, the head. Up and to the left. Yeah, there we go. And then zoom out. All right. No, I think I'm already zoomed out as far as I can go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to move up a little Please bit. Move the head up. Yeah, move the head. <coughs> yeah, move the just physically. Grab it. Yes, sir. Just slide aperture. Let us be. Bring the drone in. Yeah, there we go. Bring the drone in. Very nice. Okay. Outstanding. Okay, so when we have a look at this guy here, right, let's, let's add on if you haven't already. Uh, actually, do you want to freeze it and then you can give it back to it? <laughs> Thank you. Does someone have a question? Someone heard up? No. No, that's okay. Just, just motioning. Okay, so same deal. We've got pi on 2 here. We've got 3 pi on 2 here, and then we've got pi smack bang in the middle. Again, when you have a look at the quadrants diagram, right, when you have a look at the quadrants diagram, where, for example, is cosine negative over here? Have a look. Where is it negative? I mean, all the other quadrants. It's it's on the left hand side, right? On the left hand side over here. In other words, what angles from pi on two, all the way to? Oh, it goes past 180, doesn't it? It goes to 270, which is three pi on two, which is exactly this range in here. You see that the graph is below because what you're doing for cosine, you're measuring the x coordinate. The x coordinate is to the left over here. They're all negative. Negative, 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 negative. That's why these guys are positive okay 